thanks so much for joining us on our show today. I'm really excited to talk about potty training because I'm about to get into this world again. And talking with a fellow dad and someone in the baby space, it's going to be fun. No, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, you know, possibly give you some horrible advice on potty training that I've, I've had, uh, you know, trials and tribulations on with, with four boys. Um, I don't know what it's like to potty train a daughter, but you know, from a boy's perspective, I think I know a little bit about it now. So hopefully we can clear out some of that bad information out there today. Oh, yes, yes. And I highly doubt it's bad information. I was going to say four times potty training. That is, that's a lot. Yeah. I'm dreading it just for a second time. So I, to me, it's a, you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I am in the, I'm actually in the midst of where you're at right now. My, my youngest is uh, just starting to do potty training. So we'll see. Oh. Luckily he's got uh, older brothers to pick up on. So I there think that go. makes it a little bit easier. So totally. Absolutely. Monkey see monkey do, right? <laughs> <laughs> So before we get into it, uh, we'd love for your, our listeners to learn a little bit more about you and your background and what led you to where you are today. Well, um, you know, it was funny. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I got invited to my son's school to do career day. And Aww. the guidance counselors afterwards, were, they were like, I don't know if we can have you back again. And the reason being <laughs> is, um, uh, you know, because like when you're in school, it's like college, college, college. That's like the whole thing that they're preparing you for. I graduated high school and I had no idea what I wanted to do. And my dad was like, just go to college. I think I had like seven different majors. The one I stuck with the longest was probably criminal justice. And I would have made a horrible cop, horrible. Um, and so what really kind of, um, and I will not advise this for anybody, but it worked for me. My, uh, my wife, um, at the time we found out that we were pregnant with our first child and I kind of needed to get my, my life together. I'm a new father. Like I can't just be, you know, working these menial jobs anymore. So I, you know, my dad was like, well, you know how to BS like nobody I've ever met. So he's like, why don't you try sales? So I tried sales and, um, I got my first job doing that. And, uh, you know, here we are, um, you know, what, God, 17 years later. And, you know, I'm the, VP of sales and marketing here at Naturepedic. And uh, it's just been kind of a whirlwind. I, I was in the metals industry for a good six years and um, coming to the baby space. I mean, you know, working in the metals industry is very old and stodgy and cutthroat. And, you know, this this does have its fair share of cutthroatedness, um, but it's it's a much softer thing and it's, it's much more better suited for me being a dad. And um, I mean, I... I've been here for nine years now in Atropedic and I wouldn't change it for the world. This is, I, if, as long as they don't kick me out, I will retire from here. So, oh, you know, that, that says a lot about the company and you know, why you being so happy there and that history, nine years, that's, that's a, a good amount of time. So you, you know what you're doing. And that's why I think people are probably thinking like Naturepedic potty training. I'm so confused, but there's a whole thing that when we're talking about how to really help our children be successful with the potty training experience. There's a lot of things that you don't think about that we're going to really discuss discuss in this uh, episode today. So I'm really I'm I'm pumped to to dive in. But like I said, oh gosh, potty training it can be just a dreaded process. That's how I'm feeling. My daughter is two, and it's coming. <laughs> I potty trained my son. He made it just lovely and easy. And literally my children are the opposite. Like whatever he is mm -hmm. great at, she's terrible at. Whatever she's great at, he's terrible at. So I'm like, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun experience. But tell us about your personal potty training experience with your four boys or three boys about to be four boy now. Yeah, so th three and a half children of potty training. Um <laughs> it has been um it's it's had its ups and its downs and and it's all been uh, fairly easy. I mean, I think for the most part where it's been at least for with boys is my kids. I don't know if it's something in men in general, but we love to pee on stuff outside. And that, you know, when Why you is that? Why really, is that? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, it's not like I'm like waking up every morning, like, yay. Like, I think you outgrow it eventually, <laughs> but, um, for, for, you know, my, my kids, it's like the thought of like, Oh, you mean I get to like pee outside? And I'm like, yeah, just like, you know, Go for the tree, you know, and it's, it, what's nice is it is at least for boys is it, it, you know, obviously 
boys are peeing standing up. So it's, it's, it allows them to kind of get, go through the motions without like worrying about spraying everywhere in your bathroom. So it's kind of like almost putting the tra- training wheels on for the next step. So um, we did, we just start with the, the, the chair for all of our kids. We, you know, I would recommend getting something that was more, um, we had one that like, you know, makes the flushing noises and, you know, they, they have a little bit more. So it makes potty training a little bit more of a experience for them. And, you know, obviously allow them to graduate up to something um, that, that worked. And then we graduated to the outside portion of it. And, um, and uh, also when we moved them inside, not that we were keeping them outside the whole time, we moved them inside with potty <laughs> training, um, at least for boys, it was um, putting um, uh, Cheerios in the toilet. Um, it gives them something to aim for and, um, you know, they made a game out of it and, you know, really, uh, it was a little bit longer with our first, the second one caught on more because he was, you know, kind of watching his brother do it and then Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, you know, really we haven't had any hiccups and, uh, accidents were fairly kept to a minimum. So that's good. Did you, was there like a uh, method? I know that there's lots of books out there and strategies. Did you guys use one or you're just like, Hey, we're, we're just going to do trying out outside, come inside and just did your own thing. Or was there a method to the madness? No, I mean, I, I would say, I mean, for us, there wasn't any particular book. Um, my, you know, with having four kids, um, we I have less and less time to read. Thank God for podcasts. Um, it is the best invention that's ever happened to people. So I can still learn things and not have to pick up a book. Um, but no, more or less, it was just kind of getting tidbits from, you know, family members and stuff that I, I mean, that's, I mean, when I was a kid, my dad was like, just pee on everything in the yard you want to. And, and it kind of, it works for my kids, I, you know? So yeah, it seemed to work. So awesome. Awesome. See, and that's so funny because I did a totally different approach. And and it really goes to show that finding what works for your family and works for your child is really the right way to go. Because I I guess, so a little bit of background on, on me, Erin, I have a twin brother who has autism. And when we were being potty trained, my brother didn't catch on as fast, you know? Um, So, and my mother never allowed him to go outside because he wouldn't be able to distinguish what's Mm. appropriate going outside and what what's inappropriate. So I guess I also kind of took that mentality, even though my son, you know, thank goodness, um, is, is healthy and well. I just was like, I don't want him to go to a birthday party and be that kid peeing in the corner. Cause I guess I was so ingrained that my brother could easily do that. So I, uh, I decided to wait for like some readiness signs. And then, uh, when he was close to three, cause I've talked to some, um, urologists that they say when they're closer to three, that's when they, uh, have a better sense of, uh, feeling the urge and mm-hmm. controlling the urge um, to urinate. So I was like, okay, we'll wait a little closer to three. And I did the three day potty training method. And literally after the first day, he was fully potty trained day and night. And I was like, oh, this is a breeze. So I know that I'm in for like a really rude awakening when <laughs> I have my do- when I do this with my daughter. But um, but yeah, that did you wait for like and I want to talk about the signs of uh, potty training readiness, but did you guys look for certain potty training readiness or did you just kind of feel like, okay, they're at this age. Um, this is the time to do it. How did you guys approach that? Yeah, it was kind of probably a combination of, of age and also starting to, you know, mimic some of those patterns that, mm-hmm. you know, of watching, you know, um, of, of course, I'm sure your you parents are aware, you never get a second to yourself to, uh, you know, shower or go to the bathroom or whatever it might be. Uh, you always have an audience. My poor wife, she has it worse than I do. I mean, she's literally, she's got my two year and four year old standing there having full conversations with her. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, better her than me. Right. Um, but, uh, uh, no, they start to mimic those patterns and they see that they want to try and pick it up because they want, there's, I think an inherent readiness in them that they want to start being more like older, um, Mm -hmm. and doing the things that like, you know, it's like, um, even physically like climbing stairs on their own or, you know, just being more independent. Once they start being a little bit more independent, I think that was what more of the sign that, you know, now they're probably ready to start doing some of that training because now you get to be a big boy or girl and, you know, you're graduating to this new thing and that makes it more exciting because you guys finally get to do 
what your older siblings get to do and your parents do and all that stuff. So that's so true. Seeing that interest. I think that's the biggest thing. Like once you see that there's an interest, even just saying like, Hey, let's look at the potty. Let's flush it. Like just so then they're not intimidated when they have to sit on it and do something on it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think is a great first step. And then obviously another readiness sign we looked for is uh, making sure that they're Um, diaper was drier for longer periods of time than, Mm -hmm. you know, when they're little, because when they're little, 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 little babies, they're constantly going to the bathroom. I feel like you're changing, you know, they, you change what, eight to 12 diapers, sometimes more per day. And so once they're having longer stretches, I think that's another, another good sign and communication. Um, Their communication is a little bit uh, better. Is there anything else that you would add um, when it comes to signs of potty training readiness? And were there any other ones that your kids exhibited? Well, I think to, to your point, I mean, when they're kind of, uh, when you notice in the morning when you're, I mean, it could be a sign of like making, making sure they drink enough water, but when they get to the morning and like they haven't, um, you know, uh, uh, gone to the bathroom in the middle of the night in their diapers, that's generally a good sign too, that they're probably ready to start. You know, obviously they can hold it a little bit longer and their bodies are more developed to be able to, um, uh, keep that in. And, you know, thank goodness we've, we've had, uh, some pretty good luck or else we'd have a lot, you know, a lot of more, uh, uh, ruined sheets and mattresses and everything else. On top of it, so. <laughs> oh gosh. Yes. Which we will definitely be getting into. And when do you believe a parent should start the potty training process? I know we're talking a little bit about our experiences. Do you have a thought on that? You know, it, it really, I mean, it does boil down to whenever you feel like your child is ready. I mean, every kid is different. And that's where like, I mean, all the books, there's probably some great, you know, nuggets of truth in every single one of them. But every kid is, the kids are like, you know, snowflakes. Every single one of them is different. Every pattern is different. And, you know, I think the best thing to do is take your time with it and not get frustrated with it. Your kid is, you know, you might have one kid that picks it up within three days, which is, you know, kudos to you. I hope, I really hope the next one goes just as well. I, and, I, I'm just, you know, just not even counting on that. But thank you, Aaron. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, my, my oldest, um, you know, he took the longest, I think. I mean, we, it was many, it was a couple of months that we finally had to, you know, that he finally picked it up and wasn't, you know, having accidents in the middle of the night. Um, it was going where it was supposed to be going and, uh, all of that stuff. And then, you know, with our second son, he just picked it up right away and, and our, our third as well. And, um, so yeah, as like I said, every kid is different. Every situation is different. Um, but whatever you feel is right as a parent, um, is probably the right choice. So. I agree. Totally agree. And with your experience, what do you believe is the best way to get started with potty training? Is it the going outside? Is it getting a special little potty? Is it, yeah, what what do you think is the best way to start? I would say probably getting a special potty for them to get started with because it's theirs. I think when kids have something that it's not just like putting them on a toilet or, you know, whatever, it's like it's their special little thing. It's kind of like when they graduate to a big kid bed. You know, you, you want to make it more of an experience to get more excited about it. Um, you know, it's an opportunity to, so with, with the big kid bed, hopefully they're moving out of your room at some point and, you know, into their own and you want to make it fun for them. It's not such a big, scary thing. And starting it out like kid sized, I think is like the perfect way to get that. It, it kind of takes some of that fear factor away and it makes it special for them. Yeah. And, and yes, it because a, a toilet, they're just these little people. That thing can look big and scary and intimidating. And to sit on it and perform with an audience, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot. I get it. Um, and we know that children, like you said, vary developmentally and in temperament. Do you think the potty training process varies based on each child? Like, did you, it sounds like you had you know, a little bit more, a longer time to really potty train your first child versus your other two children. And now starting with your fourth. Um, yeah. Do you, do you think that it really needs to vary? And, and are there any, um, tips that you have seen along the way that have, that have worked? Yeah. I mean, I think he, you know, he was a little bit older, my oldest, when he finally got the hang of it. And I think he just got a slower start to it. And, you know, it's not, the biggest advice I can give to any parent and that I wish I had endless amounts of, and I think this is where like your inherent parent guilt comes from is if, you know, you're looking back 50, 60 years from now of like, what's the one thing I wish I could have done better as a parent is patience. 
just patience. They're not going to change for you overnight. They are their own person. Sometimes my, all of my children, and I'll blame their mothers for this. It has nothing to do with me is their obstinance. Um, They're, they're very strong-willed children and they are going to do it at their own pace and you cannot change their minds. Otherwise, I mean, good luck. If you can, please reach out to me. If you know how to reason with a three-year-old, I am all ears. Um, (laughs) Uh, my, my, my sons have always been, you know, marching to their uh, own drummer and, um, but yeah, patience, just try different things. I mean, it's not going to be one method that's going to work for you or your child. Um, you know, that I think, uh, is, in, you might get lucky. It's right out of the gate, but it might take a little bit of time and patience. So, yeah. And that's okay too. Like there's nothing wrong with your child or with you and, you know, maybe they're just not ready and maybe take, it's okay to take a step back too and try again a little bit later. Um, I think that some people are just like, no, we're doing it and muscle through it. And then it's like months and months and months. And I'm like, how about you just give yourself your, the own, your own break and like start again in like uh, when you feel you're both ready to to do that again. I think that's another thing, giving ourselves grace of, all right, this isn't working. Let's, let's reconvene and try this again a little bit later. And so a big thing is, you know, now that I'm getting ready to start potty training my daughter, it's like, okay, what do I need to do to incentivize? Cause that's something that my children are very big in. Yes. I know you're not supposed to bribe your kids. Sorry. Like a lot of people do it. And, and I don't think it's bribing. I think it's again, like a, an incentive, like you just went potty. So you're going to get this reward. Um, or like you said, um, getting a special, special potty, but what are the products that you think can really help uh, with potty training, the ones that people think of and the ones that people may not be aware of? Well, um, I mean, what worked for our third son, our third son was the only uh, child that we had to bribe. So, um, and what worked for us is, uh, and I highly recommend is using um, um, Yum Earth candies. We don't really, we don't do anything with dyes in our house, which is a whole other episode in and of itself. That is, uh, I, I, we're very tried and true, uh, anti-dye people for our children. And it's like night and day on our children. But so we used, uh, they have, uh, giggles, which are like, I think they're, they're M&M's equivalent or Skittles or something. And every time he went to the bathroom and washed his hands properly, he would get three of them. It wasn't a lot. It was just enough to like, you know, uh, get it done. And he was happy. And like I said, it, it seemed to work. And that was, he was the only one we had to bribe. The other ones, uh, in, in the, the baby, the, 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 you know, two and a half year old, he's, he's doing great on his own right now. Does not need any bribery. Um, so, but that was, that was something that worked for us. So, but yeah, I think, I think rewards are always a nice thing for, um, you know, letting them know that they did well. And it's like kind of, kind of that end goal for them to get at one, one thing it's nice to have the, the success, but like, you know, they're only going to pat themselves on the back so much. It's like, all right, where's my candy now? That's, that's what I want. So, um, yeah, that's what I would recommend. Yes. And is there anything that we need to do to prepare ourselves? Like, for example, you know what, the the method that I did with my son, um, again, I did that three day. So the first day it's literally make them be pantless. I, I put towels and puppy pads like Mm -hmm. everywhere and just kept giving him liquids and every 10 minutes I'd be like let's go to the potty (laughs) and (laughs) and basically was teaching and when they have nothing on they're going to be you know having an accident on the floor and that doesn't feel so great that can be a little like wait a minute something's not there catching it so those were just some things that helped me but also nighttime People don't really think about daytime versus nighttime uh, potty training. And so let's talk about all the the other like products that you think uh, parents need to prepare for if there are any. Yeah, I mean, I think um, product wise, um, I definitely I would to your point, I mean, with the, uh, you know, having them walk around without any pants on, I would maybe try and get some, if you don't have them or, or I would try and maybe for the first couple of days of getting baby gates and probably have them in an area of your house where Mm -hmm. puppy pads, like don't, don't have them on the carpet is probably like the best thing that you can do for yourself. Um, I, I think that's probably the best thing. And then maybe, um, you know, multiple, water containers in like every room, like have a sippy or whatever they use to get their liquids in. I would maybe have that in like different sections. So there's something ready, readily at hand to kind of get through that 
cycle of them um, drinking. And then um, probably a lot of wine for yourself. That might be something to kind of make that process easier um, to kind of ease the, you know, pain of them peeing on the floor again. But uh, yeah, I think those are probably good, uh, good, good things to think about. So um, love it. Love it. And now what are, what do you think are the biggest challenges you see parents facing when it comes to potty training and how do you think we can overcome those challenges? Well, I think, um, you know, being mindful of, you know, especially if you're nighttime training, right. I think Mm -hmm. those are, uh, the biggest hurdle. Like it's easier to keep in track of them during the day because you're both awake. You can Mm -hmm. look for those signs. Mine always were, especially with two of my sons is they would run and hide behind something when they were ready to go. So, you know, we'd always catch them doing something there because they wanted their, their privacy or whatever. So just got to like, you know, snatch them real quick, take them to the bathroom. Um, but, uh, I would try and, um, limit, you know, obviously not, I would try and, I don't know when I, I would, you know, look it up somewhere, but I, I would think, um, or maybe we can, you know, uh, let you guys know afterwards. I would probably have like a cutoff time when it comes to like just gulping down any sort of liquid. Um, even for my, my almost five-year-old come nighttime, he's like, it's bedtime. He's real thirsty, tiny sips. That's all we're trying to like. And I think it's around like, you know, we try and cut off like a decent amount of drinking water around like six thirty, seven 7 o'clock. Um, and then I'll have little sips afterwards. This way it really limits the chance. And he has not had one accident since we started doing that, um, at night of just limiting and then come morning, you know, obviously, uh, gloves are off, but just trying to limit it a little bit, uh, come nighttime. So absolutely. That's a really great tip. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. And let's talk about nighttime potty training. And I want to talk about people don't really think about the accidents that happen and then thinking about their bedding and their mattress and the whole process to really keep things sanitary and less of a pain for the parents, but also the kids. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about, you know, nighttime potty training and how that fits into the training process. Well, and no matter what uh, mattress you end up getting for your child, I highly recommend for a multitude of reasons is um, having a waterproof pad on your mattress. Mm -hmm. Um, Those have been a godsend for my wife and I Um, is, I don't know if you're, you know, if you had this experience with your son, if you, I hope you never have to, but for some reason, children do not have the wherewithal to get up in the middle of the night and run to a toilet if they have to throw up. Um, They will literally just lay there and just do what they need to do. And then you have to deal with that later on. So that's why waterproof pads are amazing. Cause it, 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 you know, for, again, for the throw up and the accidents and everything else that can happen, especially with nighttime training. Um, and I mean, even as an adult, you should probably have one too, just from, uh, you know, you never know, you gotta be have a drinking cup of coffee in bed and all of a sudden it spills all over the place and you just ruin this nice, you know, expensive mattress that you have. So at any age, waterproof mattress, um, or cover. And if your kids happen to come in and not bed with you at night, my, my almost five-year-old, he'll wake up a couple times uh, a week sometimes and try and crawl into bed with us. And, you know, we have a very nice, fancy naturopedic mattress and I am not having somebody pee on it. That's, uh, it's not going to happen. Um, so, you know, I would recommend that. Um, but, uh, it definitely cuts the, the fear, I think of night. Cause it, it, again, accidents are going to happen. That's where the patients come is in is in this way. You don't have to ruin your mattress. You don't have to ruin your, um, pillows and everything else. I would get a waterproof protector pad for your pillow and another one for your mattress. And really it's just, uh, after that, it's just continuing the, the pattern of, of, you know, the training with them. So, yeah. So, and if you don't have a waterproof pad or a mattress. Can you explain to us kind of why that's important? Because the whole process, I actually, so we have loved Naturepedic. I had um, a Naturepedic crib mattress still for my daughter. I, once we're fully potty trained, I will be getting her into her big girl bed because she's got to be able to get out and, mm-hmm. you know, go to the potty. Um, my son is also on a Naturepedic mattress and we've loved them, but I want to know, like, if we didn't have that waterproof <laughs> process, uh, what what would we have to go through if you know a, a kid did throw up or urinate or heaven forbid also defecate on the bed? Like, what's what's the whole what what do parents need to know? 
Well, and this goes not even just for kids' beds, but I mean, mm-hmm. crib mattresses in general too. Like anything that your child is sleeping on that's not waterproof. It's again, all those, you know, I've had every bodily fluid my kid has to, to uh, throw at me, on me at some point in time. They are constantly leaking from some area. Um, and, uh, but what happens is when they're sleeping, even if it's strool, if it's spit up, it's a blowout diaper, throw up, whatever, whatever's getting inside of that mattress, we, whether it's a, you know, breathable mattress that you, you know, can't wash or these kids' beds that for sure you cannot, um, wash and nor would you want to, cause it takes so much time to dry these things is mold is going to start to grow. It only takes about nine days for mold to start to grow. And now your baby, the child that you love more than anything else in this world is now breathing in black mold and you cannot see it because of what it's doing is it's growing underneath the surface. So every night where that baby's going to bed, you know, you're having, um, you know, there's potential for, you know, asthma and, you know, other, other health issues that are going to be going by breathing in that mold, um, from them being on that mattress night after night after night. And you're not gonna be able to tell the difference anyway, because again, it's all under the surface. Right. Right. Oh, which can be so scary because you think, you know, you're just trying to take care of your kids and all of a sudden this build up and you're totally unaware of it. And that's, but I think parents are then confused because they'll hear, well, I need a breathable mattress, but I need a waterproof mattress. And those are kind of like oxymorons because if it's breathable, it should be like porous and, and you can breathe through it. But if it's waterproof, nothing should be getting through that. So mm-hmm. can you explain, can you explain this to us? Well, yeah. So, I mean, that's the beauty of Naturepedic being owned by three engineers, which also has its own pitfalls because they're engineers. Um, but we, we take everything apart and put it back together like a million times. And, you know, breathable care mattresses were kind of a big thing uh, a couple of years ago and still are today. Um, and what we set out to do is make one better than everybody else. And I feel like we've achieved that because, what we're able to do now is a lot of other breathable crib mattresses on the market. Again, if your baby spits up, if they drool, if the, there's a blowout diaper, whatever gets inside of that crib mattress, unless you're washing it and putting it in a shower and waiting four to six hours for it to dry, which, you know, again, you've been a new parent, um, uh, you know, to think of all the myriad of things that you have to do, like sleep is number one that you're trying to accomplish, not wash your crib mattress out. So what we did is we still have our, Naturopedic waterproof crib mattress, and that has a um, non-GMO sugar cane. That's what we use water uh, to make our waterproofing. Mm-hmm. And then we created a removable, washable, breathable cover. And we've actually had it independently tested by um, um, outside labs to show that it's breathability. And it's just as breathable within those breathability standards as any other one on the market without giving up any of those hygiene concerns. So the whole cover just pops right off and goes right into the wash. So... Um, that, that and it, again, it creates airflow, and it's not even just the safety factor. Um, if you put your hand on a waterproof crib mattress for about five seconds, it starts to get real sweaty, and sweaty babies don't sleep really well. So um, it really helps them regulate body temperature. So it actually has an added benefit. So if baby's sleeping longer, you're sleeping longer. So um, th- that's where the you know the breathability comes into all of that. Yeah. And I'm glad we're talking about crib mattresses because this is typically when parents are, you know, uh, like, okay, I need to do the potty training thing and they're in a crib mattress, but then they need to graduate because like I said, um, they're going to, you know, either their crib transforms into a toddler bed or you get them the big boy, big girl bed, um, and then you need to get potentially another mattress. So can you walk us through, I actually... Um, I love that I have this like sample. I want to like walk through like why you guys designed your crib mattress the way you did and also being mindful of like the whole potty training process of having like, you're saying, I want to know about the mattress, but then also the pad, whatever we need to do to make sure that we have like a successful, smooth nighttime (laughs) experience. (laughs) Well, if you're looking for a great uh, transition mattress, um, you know, from those toddler ages, which are all, we do not make one crib mattress that's not waterproof. So Mm -hmm. if you're looking for a great transitional mattress, our uh, two-in-one kids bed is great. That comes in a twin, a full, and a um, a twin XL. And it's waterproof on one side, uh, the same waterproofing we use. uh, Yeah, that one for the crib mattresses. So okay. there's not that's made with the non-GMO sugarcane, and uh, that is an organic cotton surface as well. 
And then the other side, when the, that's for the potty training, that's for the accidents, that's everything. And then when you get to be about, I mean, I hope for, for your sake, when they're about like, you know, seven, um, uh, when they, when they're not throwing up with their laying, um, you can flip that over to the quilted side and that actually has more, uh, stuffing on there and it actually feels more of like a traditional mattress. So, right. um, yeah, great transitional mattress for those parents who are in those stages where their, their kids are, you know, learning how to, to, um, take care of themselves a little bit more. Awesome. And that's really helpful to know. I didn't realize, I was like, when do you change this to the other side? Is there kind of like a, an age, you said like six or seven or, or is there, um, what should we look for to know that it's time to flip the mattress? I think when you're going through like at least probably for our son, when we flipped his, he was probably four, um, when we flipped him to the other side, just because he had gone through so many nights of, the accidents and everything like that, that he wasn't doing them anymore. So we felt a little bit more comfortable on it. Again, we were doing the, um, I don't want to say withholding water. That sounds really horrible. Uh, we were just limiting his water, um, a little bit come bedtime. And then, um, we still have a waterproof pad on it. Um, just like we do our mattress, we have a waterproof pad on there. So we flipped him over to the quilted side. He was about four when we did that. And, um, you know, it's really, again, looking for those telltale signs. Whenever you feel that your kid is ready, that's the right time. So. Right, right. And that waterproof mattress, we have one as well on our son because uh, he's now, he just turned six. And um, I agree. Uh, luckily, I, there are some kids that are literally my daughter. She has thrown up more in her two years than my son has ever done in his life. I think my son has thrown up twice in his whole life. He just has this really like solid stomach. And this girl, mm -mm, she'll cry and she'll make herself throw up. I'm like, cool, let's, <laughs> let's change everything and then when they have all the dolls in there and have to wash all the dolls I'm like this is just this is not fun this is not it but um I do appreciate the the waterproof uh pad because if they are on that softer quilted side you don't have to worry about like you said that mold and all of that growing so that's that's a that's good for us to know though once you see a good amount of dry nights Mm -hmm. Um, and they're getting older and that sort of thing. It's okay to, to flip it over. And then even, even adults, we can have those because you're right. Like you never postpartum sweat. Oh my gosh. Like after you have a baby, like, oh, you're just, uh, your wife knows what I'm talking about, but you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I, mean, I, it was a, a clear division in our bed afterwards of her. She did not let go of her pregnancy pillow for probably <laughs> four to five months after there was like a, like the, the great wall in our bed of uh, this pillow being there. I've laid it. I I literally, I passed down on it many times. It's a, it's very comfortable. And I see why she wanted to give up our marriage for that pillow, but um, it was, it was fine. So. Oh, it's so true. In pregnancy, you will do anything for some comfort uh, because that baby is just, you know, making it, making it itself comfortable and, and anything, all, all 20 pillows are that big pregnancy pillow is absolutely necessary, which that's just the next thing you guys need to start uh, making. Oh, as I, so I don't have, I can't show it to you because it wouldn't show up in the screen because it's so big. So we're going to try and have our pregnancy pillow launched by the end of the year. Stop. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, so it's kind of like we, we just launched our, um, nursing pillow that actually yes. won a good housekeeping award, um, for best parenting award 2023. Um, it's very watching, you know, my, my wife go through nursing and everything with our, our sons and everything is, is, you know, latching was an issue right after, you know, she gave birth. They're trying to put like two traditional, uh, 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 nursing pillows, two of them, and then propping towels up and everything to get a proper latch for and everything. And it's like, that's not how a pro you shouldn't have to use two of something to make it a viable product. So we made ours. It's also very size inclusive. All the other ones on the market generally go up to about size 14. Ours goes up to size 26. Um, that's awesome. And it's even like, there's no more excuses from dads for late night bottle feeding because it fits me perfectly fine. I weigh 215 pounds, get up at three in the morning and let your wife sleep. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the pregnancy pillow, we're going to have that, uh, hopefully by the end of the year and same token, I, we wanted to make something that wasn't just organic, um, and something that's a lot more functional. It is so comfortable. We've had actually, uh, nine different, um, 
uh, pregnant moms test it out for us already and they absolutely love it. It gives them all the support they need. Their hips feel better. Um, and it is, it sleeps like a dream. It is, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's a monster as far as like being big, but you kind of have to, I mean, like that, that baby is twisting you all kinds of ways and you need something to be, you know, it's like a, it's like a cocoon now. So that's what um, I'm saying. You either have 20 pillows or that monster pregnancy pillow, because you got to do what you got to do to be able to get some sleep. Oh, you know? my wife, my wife was the, the sacrificial lamb, if you want to call her anything <laughs> of us in our product development. And what I mean by that is watching her go through all things. She made like her little nest of pillows and because her, her pregnancy pillow was not cutting it. So, um, it kind of like, you know, the light clicked on that we needed to probably make something better ourselves. So we went through a lot of rounds of R and D mm-hmm. and, you know, trying to make sure that, um, you know, my wife, we're done at four, so she's not going to reap the benefits of this, but every other mom thereafter, uh, is going to love this. So it'll be great. Well, thanks so much for giving us uh, a little bit of a sneak peek into, uh, upcoming products. We're very excited to learn more about that, but just getting to hear about it sounds like it's going to be awesome. Um, and now <laughs> your wife, having gone through all of the pregnancy now her final one with potty training so you know for for top potty training tips if you were to leave our audience with just anything like one piece of advice or your top things for people to remember uh when it comes to tips and tricks with potty training what would those be Erin? you know don't uh i would say if it doesn't work the first go around if you're reading the book or whatever like don't you know, obviously you're not going to give up on your child, but don't feel like you're a failure as a parent. It just might not work for them. Again, every kid is different. Try something different. The main thing is just be patient with yourself and be patient with them because that's what's, you know, I remember when I was a kid and I, I don't do this to any of my children, trying to learn math in junior high school. And my dad was trying to help me was the worst experience I've ever had trying to learn something because dads have zero patience for sons when it comes to doing math homework. And I was not getting it. And, you know, he's, it's, you know, old school, you know, 80s parenting in its finest. But, um, uh, you know, again, just being patient for your kid, they're going to get it eventually. Just keep trying, try all the different tricks, you know, bribe them if you have to, it works. Um, I, you know, don't, there's no shame in it. It's kind of like when you, you know, turn your TV on for 20 minutes and you can go, you know, cry in your pantry because it's so horrible that day. Just do it. Just do it. It's fine. No one's judging you. So, yes. And I really think that, you know, it sounds like you and your wife were really a team in that. And I think that's what also is helpful when everyone is on the same mission, working together to help this child learn. Um, So yes, if you are crying in the pantry, like you said, Aaron, your wife's got this and vice versa. (laughs) Yeah, It it happens. There are days where you just feel like, you know, it's just uh, parenting, but it is that to your point about being a team especially if they're with anyone else, be it a grandparent or yes. your spouse for any long period of time, just making sure that they're on the same level as you are when it comes to training, because mm-hmm. any dip in the amount of training goes like, you're just, it's, it's kind of like working out. Like you're going to lose all of the good, you know, progress that you've made if they're not keeping up with what you're doing as well. So it's so true. It's so true. Oh, I love that. And do you have any resources or tools or final thoughts that you'd like to leave our audience with Aaron? Well, you know, we don't, you know, one thing about naturopedic that we never, we always were huge on education. Um, we love being a resource for parents. I mean, being parents ourselves, we've seen a lot of it and done a lot of it. Um, I'm by no means, uh, am I, I, I would love for, I, I'm not raising a group of future doctors at this point. I probably have reserved myself for that. As long as they don't become serial killers, we won. So, um, I, I think the best thing to do is, um, you know, we don't try and shame parents of like past choices they might've made with their kids if they find something out new. And that goes for, you know, again, we didn't get to any of them on, uh, this podcast at all, but, um, you know, uh, the organic side of things. I mean, so many parents that we come to them, they go, Oh my God, I feel like such a bad parent. Cause I was exposing my kid to this or doing that. It's all about like learning and growing from, from there is really like just making a better choice tomorrow is really what is going to make you a better parent. And as long as you're trying, you're a good parent. That's all that really matters. So parenting is hard. It's really hard. 
It is. It is. And we're constantly learning. They're learning from us. We're learning from them. It's so true. And I will say to our listeners, you can listen to our other uh, episodes with Naturepedic. We talked to Barry um, about what to look for when choosing a crib mattress. There's a lot. I I love how you said, you know, uh, we didn't dive into it in this episode um, about the whole organic side, but you can learn more from um, our other episodes because it was really insightful to hear um, the whole reasoning for why you guys started Naturepedic and what you guys are doing for families. And, um, and I really love hearing, you know, listeners, I got a little, got a little, um, sneak peek. Aaron told me that you guys are launching like 80 new products next year. So for you guys to really take, take what you do so seriously and are so passionate about what you're doing and creating, um, a healthier home, for, for all of us. Um, and obviously when we're sleeping, that's, that's where we're spending the most amount of time, especially our littlest ones. Um, so we're just so thankful for all that you guys do. And I think that, um, even when it comes to potty training, people don't think about, oh yeah, nighttime and taking all of those things into consideration because daytime potty training and nighttime potty training can be, two different journeys <laughs> and and that's okay so uh we're so appreciative of you sharing like your experience and your tips and recommendations to all of us no we were happy to to be on here again today and you know we we love um how engaged your audience is and you guys do an amazing job and we're happy to be partners so mm, of course and and aaron just remind us where can our listeners find you guys Well, we're in just about almost every major retailer in the country right now, either online or in store, Um, Amazon, Target, Bye Bye Baby. Um, I would, Bye Bye Baby's coming back, by the way. Um, They'll be back uh, soon. Um, And Pottery Barn, Creighton Kids. But I also don't want to be remiss in, there are a lot of, um, this is how Naturepedia got its start, is independent baby stores in your hometown That's how Nature Peter got its start. And so many of them, unfortunately, are closing. And I would, you know, these mom and pops that are really, you know, trying to put the best products together for you and your family. I, you know, shop local as much as you can. If not, if there's not an opportunity there, um, obviously, we're in a lot of the other major uh, stores. Babylist is a great resource, too. They're an amazing partner of ours. And um, but yeah, we're we're in a lot of different places. So uh, it makes it a lot more accessible. So and where can we find you guys online and on social? So we are, our website is um, naturepedic.com and uh, we, our socials are all at naturepedic um, for Instagram, Facebook, all that. Fabulous. Oh, Aaron, thank you so much again for your time and spending it with us. We're just so grateful. And this was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, I was happy to be here today course. And for our listeners out there to learn more about Aaron and Naturepedic, you can find them online, as he said, at naturepedic.com or Instagram, Facebook at Naturepedic. Also, thank you to our Naturepedic friends. All of our listeners can receive a 20% discount using the code babychick20 when checking out uh, for any Naturepedic products. So again, that's babychick20 at Naturepedic. Thank you to our friends at Naturepedic for sponsoring this episode. We're just such big fans of you guys and know that our listeners will love them too. Our team will be posting today's episode on Baby Chick Facebook page and Instagram and YouTube. So if you have any questions or comments about our discussion, please share them with us in the comment section. Also, please subscribe to Chick Chat, the Baby Chick podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us an honest review. Cheers to stress-free potty training.